Oh, you're supposed to start saying that. Hello. Uh, my name is Gloria Davidson, and I am at the Art Club, St. John Art Club. And I'm here to interview David Meek, who is an artist at the club. And Pierre Baumier is going to video, and he's going to video the interview, and he's going to show David's work. Welcome, Pierre and David. Thank you. Now, um, when did you... The St. John Art Club is a, the, one of the oldest clubs in Canada. It, it was founded in 1918. And um, David, could you tell us a little bit about the art club? Yes. Well, it's very interesting to look at the, the history of the club. And we have actually a little book about it, which someone kindly drew up um, about 10 years ago. Um, it started at a time when there was very little opportunity to see art in St. John. There were no galleries, no commercial galleries. No, you, the museum didn't have any artwork. Um, but it was quite a wealthy industrial town. Hmm. And so some of the business people got together and decided to raise funds to buy works of art mm -hmm. to show to the population of St. John. Hmm. Um, at the same time, there was an art school that was looking, looking for someone to take it over, and so I think they, they took over one of the art schools that existed in St. John at that time. Oh, I see. And right now, you have members of the art club, and anybody can join who's interested in art? Yes. Correct? So it's evolved, so it is much more of a, a club of artists. Now, many of the artists are, are amateur who just like to paint at weekends. Others are retired people like me who kind of finally have time to paint. Mm -hmm. and, and then there are others who are professional artists who are just kind of getting started and, and they haven't achieved uh, a contract with a professional gallery yet. Okay. And so on a very informal basis, they want to show their paintings here in the gallery. Mm -hmm. I think the gallery is very nice when we sell people's paintings, mm -hmm. but also I think it's important that it shows art to people who are just wandering by, who would never go into a real art gallery. Mm -hmm. And it's just wonderful to see some of the little children or some of the young adults, people who would never venture Enter, yeah. into yeah. a formal gallery. We just come and enjoy seeing the paintings. Mm. And you, uh, the gallery has the Artist of the Month, and this month it's featuring Morg Walsh. And Pierre, you can take a shot of the Morg's work. So yes, uh, um, Morg is a very accomplished watercolor artist, and we were very lucky that she came to join our club. She moved to St. John recently from St. Andrews and uh, just some wonderful watercolor paintings. I like this one here. Oh, yes. This one is lovely, yeah. isn't it? Mm. Well, they're all very good. Yeah, I mean, that I, looks like a real professional painting. Mm, it does, yes. Um, now, you were born in England and you moved to, or you immigrated to Canada, and then you went to Dalhousie Medical School. And when did you become first interested in art? Well, I suppose my artistic career, it has two parts because it started like many people when I was a child, and I loved to draw and paint, especially mm -hmm. painting. And I think it was the only thing I ever won any prizes for at school was my artwork. Mm -hmm. um, and and then in my teenage years, I did a little bit of wood carving. Mm -hmm. um, and you have and, some wood carvings, right? And I, I have a couple. Yeah, none none of my early paintings survived. Uh, my father threw them all out, um, but I thought they were good. Uh, and, oh yes, uh, the So I started off with fairly realistic little animals, 
and then moved to somewhat more abstract pieces. This is a piece of wood that I found in the garden actually it was a tree that had been just chopped down. It was an apple tree and it was where it was grafted on. So that was back in the 1960s. Mm. Well, then there was a bit of a gap because I was studying medicine and became a physician and, and there really wasn't much time for painting. Mm. Um, and uh, so it was just the last few years when I was working, I started taking some courses mm -hmm. in, in painting again and, uh, and got back into it, kind of preparing for the day that I retired and I would actually have time to do some painting. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, another work that you have, which is oil painting, correct? And it's fairly large, it's 18 by 24. And it's of Charles Darwin. Now, do you mind if I ask you what is your interest in choosing Charles Darwin as a subject matter? Yeah, well, he was a remarkable man, and I would have learned about him as a teenager when I was studying biology. And he really stood out as someone who was very astute in his observations. He had very strict rules that he set for himself to make sure that he was objective uh, and he worked away on him on his own for years drawing up and perfecting his theory of evolution mm -hmm. um, it was a, a very unusual kind of situation he was from a fairly wealthy family so mm -hmm. he had a place to live he had terrible health problems so uh, he couldn't go out very much and there were weeks when he couldn't work at all mm. but when he was feeling well he worked away at his project um, yes no it's a the, very nice portrait. this painting is is actually a copy of a portrait mm -hmm. um, and i remember seeing this in the international portrait gallery in london england uh back maybe about 10 years ago mm -hmm. and just thinking at that time well that's a remarkable painting. Mm. I'd really like to do a painting of Darwin sometime. So I took a kind of couple of photographs of it and then so it was about 10 years later just earlier this year I actually got around to, to doing my painting. Mm. So it is fairly true to the original painting. The original is actually twice the size of, of my painting um, and I did change things a little bit. I put the the green color here and and so I could have the green highlights or the reflected green highlights on this side of his face. Yes, um, yes, and, I like the way you did it. And yes. I changed his coat a little bit. The, the one he had was a bit more kind of rustic, I guess. Uh, and he's got a hat and, and the beard and the coat, you know, yes. a gentleman, a gentleman for sure. Yeah. Striking. Well, oh, and you know, he's quite a reticent man mm -hmm. and who would just like to work away by himself uh, out of the public light. Yes. And, uh, and I, think, I think it has that expression about it. Yes. Now, you have sold some paintings done in Rockwood Park or of Rockwood Park and also Tucker Park. And one painting you have here is done from Tucker Park. And um, it's a painting of an uprooted tree. And I just love this painting. Um, can you tell us a little bit yeah. about it? Yeah. So this is actually my latest painting. I just finished it last week. And uh, it's a little corner of the woods. Um, it's, uh, I like sort of getting off the beaten path and, and just going into the forest and finding these little seams. And this was a wonderful scene with a rock that seemed to be somewhat overhanging. Very difficult to get that effect on the painting and I don't know how well I did that. But we've got the rock which has a lot of blue green um, mm. lichen. Uh, now, and, and painting this was tricky because usually when you're painting things that are in the shade, you tend to paint them darker because mm. that's what makes it look like it's in the shade. 
Yes. But it was very difficult to know what colour to paint the, the lichen to, to make it look darker mm. because it really didn't look dark even when it was in the shade. Mm -hmm. And I kind of struggled with this for quite a while and I tried to sort of dull it down. Yes, and I like the color use that yeah. you use, the green. Well, Instead of a cool green, yeah. you have a warm green. Yeah, but then the thing was that I realized that the reason why it was difficult to get the effect of the lichen in the shade is that lichen is a very fluorescent uh, type of plant. Mm. So it actually absorbs ultraviolet light and retransmits it as visible light so that even though it's in a dark place, mm. it really shines out. So that's when I decided, well, I'll just paint the lichen the way I see it, because that's how it should be. Very nice. And you have other works here as well. Are they from Tucker Park? So uh, this one is from Tucker Park, and this is from uh, an area close to the river where there was this extraordinary little area where these lovely cedar trees kind of uprooted and their roots were intertangled with the roots of this birch tree and pulled that up so they fell down one way and the birch fell down the other. Mm -hmm. Now, kind of like contrasting. The reason why this all happened was over the last, well, like three years, two or three years ago and the year before that, we had a lot of flooding of the kind of cases river. Mm -hmm. So the river came all over here and washed away the soil. Mm -hmm. And that's why these trues, trees, the next winter came and that's when they became uprooted. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of victims of global warming in a way. Yes. And this one here is splint. And, and this one, well, this is the other thing that can happen to trees. Mm -hmm. And this looks like it was a pretty healthy tree, but there must have been an extraordinary windstorm mm -hmm. that, uh, that blew this over. Yeah. So again, the unusual change in our climate mm. is uh, wreaking destruction in the forest. So it's almost like the trees in motion or has had yeah. some effect climate. Uh, now, how would you describe your work generally? Well, it's evolving because I've tended to start doing things realistically, and, and particularly if I'm doing portraits, because I think it's most people don't relate easily to portraits that don't look like the person. Um, but I'm tending to move more towards abstraction. I'm trying to be more inventive with my colors, and I'd like to see developing a freer style Mm -hmm. so that it's more expressive. Um, mm. I'd like to work from life rather than from photographs, mm. although inevitably in winter sometimes it's much more comfortable to sit down with a photograph and look yes. from that. Um, well, you do buildings outside. You've done a building outside in the summertime. I have mm. done one. And so this is the start of the building, of, <laughs> well, of the buildings that you're going yeah. to do in the future. Perhaps, yeah, well, perhaps. Maybe, maybe, I'm not sure how far <laughs> the buildings will go. Yeah, maybe. But well, as I say, I, I kind of look at myself as an art student who's trying to find my own style. I think uh, that would be a good way to describe uh, it, really. But you have a very nice um, subject matter. I just love it. Thank you for It's very kind much. of contrasting, but I think because you have the trees the green and they're very nice color and it that contrasts with the subject matter of the material the trees that are uprooted and you make it warm green instead of cool and i think it works your warm browns and your and colors it's it i think the other thing that's interesting is how when you're out in the woods uh, painting or wherever you're painting, you start noticing little things mm -hmm. like the, the lichen or, or why do these trees uproot. And it's actually in the process of painting that you discover things about the physical world around you. Yes. And if we look back at uh, 
artists and scientists. Mm -hmm. There are many examples, people like Leonardo da Vinci, mm -hmm. who made all kinds of inventions and discoveries. Charles Darwin, he had little sketchbooks where he yes, noted things yes, down. Yes, yes. And uh, my own interest, of course, as a neurologist, was in how people understood the brain and how it's made up. Mm -hmm. Well, the person that discovered the, the basic structures of the cells in the brain mm -hmm. was an art. Well, he was a physician who wanted to be an artist. Growing up, he always wanted to be an artist, and his family told him, well, you need to make some money to get to be a physician. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so his, um, so he became a pathologist, and he spent hours mm -hmm. looking at slides of the brain under mm -hmm. a microscope and drawing them. Mm -hmm. And it was from that process of observation and drawing mm -hmm. that he deduced how the cells in the brain connect mm -hmm. to each other. And, yes. and that was the foundation of our modern understanding about how the brain yes. works. And your paintings show that you are trying to understand uh, little bits of the forest, like that, like the light, and instead of these well, paintings apparently show that. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. I mean, I go out to do a painting, but inevitably I discover things that I hadn't noticed before mm -hmm. as I try to take in what I'm seeing around me mm -hmm. and, and put it down on, on the canvas. Well, thank you very much. And I wanted to say thank you for your interview today. It's been very lovely. And best of luck in your future endeavors. And happy painting, David. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And it's, it's lovely to have a good artist like you who's taking on this challenge of, of presenting our world to the rest of the world. Thank you, David.